Hi, we're going to do a training to get today with guest maker Karina Grace, and she's really amazing at drawing Celtic knots and everything. So what we're going to do is have her share some of her drawings, and then we're going to take those and bring them into Cricut Design Space, and we're going to make some stickers with them. And the process is really, really easy. So Without further ado, I'm going to introduce Karina, and she's going to talk a little bit about the knots and how she drew them and how we're going to be able to take those and bring them into design space. So go ahead, Karina, and welcome. Thank you. Well, as you can see with the screen that's showing right now, I have a bunch of knots put up there that I've been playing around with to make into stickers because I really like putting stickers in my journal. So um, what I'll do is I'll just take you through the process on how I make a Celtic knot. Uh, we'll just do a simple three by three grid. And uh, this is done in Procreate, but you can do it on paper. You can do it um, on any drawing program as long as you know the basis. So. I'm just going to turn my camera off quickly and then show you everything on my iPad. Okay. So I'm just going to this and I'm going to go into my brush settings and I have already made my own um brush for procreate which we are going to include uh with this class so it's just a simple two by two grid guide and i can just play with where i want to put it so i just put it smack dab in the middle i'm going to choose my color and then i'm going into a monoline these are my favorite brushes to use. I'm just going to zoom in a bit. So Celtic knots are really, really simple. So what we're going to do here is we just draw a line like that and like that and like that. And you always start with the middle and it's always that way. And then I'm just going to connect like that. Just quickly draw that out. And there you have a simple two by two knot that. Now, if you want, I'm just going to clear the screen here you can use the dot grid um on separate layers if you want oops so i uh, say i want that was my two by two grid say i want to do um a little bit more so what i'll do is i'll add a layer Add that and just kind of superimpose it on there, and then add a layer, put it down again, and add a layer, put it down again. That way, I can have a bigger grid if I wanted a bigger grid. And then I'm going to layer all of those. I'm just going to merge them into one. Then I'm going to add a new layer on top. And this time I'm going to just use my monoline. And I'm going to go into my layer here and just down the opacity a little bit. And I'm going to use maybe a, a green color a dark green for the outline. And then it's pretty much the same thing. I'm just going to check. Yeah, that's about right. 
So you're always just going one way or the other for the whole grid. And that's how you draw the knots. Now I'm going to take you back to my gallery and show you an example of, let's do, what's the easy ones? Let's do this one. So if I just take off that layer, you'll notice I have a bunch of uh, solid lines. Now these are called, these here are called break lines. And you put them in to, you put them in to uh, stop where you're putting your knot work in. So for example, on this one, you would start your knots, but then this, these break lines, you can't go over them. So that would cause you to go around them or if that makes any sense. And then there, there's a break line. So you would just add that there. And that's just really that simple to do Celtic knots. Um, if you would like, I'm just gonna figure out how to delete this, <laughs> delete that. So as you can see, I have the, the knots finished on top of the grids. Now, if you want to take these and put them into the stickers, all you need to do is hide the layer that has the grid work on it. Go to your, oops, go to your actions, go to share, do a JPEG or a PNG save the image and then you can upload it to design space and then from there you can make your stickers and that's where we're going to go back to that wow these are incredible now you downloaded these as a jpeg or a png uh that one was the png i'm just going to stop sharing here okay and then send it over if i can figure out how to stop sharing Okay, because um, if you bring them in as a PNG, that's going to be one of the important things when uh, you're going to make a sticker, a PNG, because you want a transparent background. So I'm going to grab the copy from Karina. She's actually going to pass it to me uh, through Facebook. So one second here. She's going to give me that file that she just saved. And I'll just wait for it here in Facebook and I'll bring that one up and then we'll go into design space and see what we can do with it at that point. So if you don't mind passing it over, Karina, that would be fabulous. Yep, I just got to. It always takes a little time to get it, but that it's no big deal. The whole idea is that then now you have a great idea of how you can make those Celtic knots and then we can take them from that and make some stickers. And as Karina said, she loves using it in her planners, her own stickers, something she's made. Now you don't have to use Procreate to draw and make those. You could draw them by hand and scan them in as well. But the theory behind it is still the same. You still need some sort of grid. Well, you could use uh, dot paper in order to do that and just highlight where those dots are going to be and you could take it from there do you have any yeah. other comments about how you could do it by hand Karina while you're passing me the file yeah you can also take a sheet of paper and then just draw out the grid yourself what it is is a square and you circle all corners of the square and in the middle of the square and you just keep doing that Okay, so you could build your grid from there. Yeah, on just on a piece of paper. I like to use the dot grids in my planners if I'm going to go in directly. Mm -hmm. um, which, which makes perfect draw. sense because I, yeah. I love those little dots. They're like grid lines for me so that I can and create more. Now, I'm not too sure if I have any of that dot paper, but most of you have probably seen the dot paper, and I had some here at one point. I think I still do, hiding underneath here. 
and it's uh, just in one of my designs, but it's this is what we're talking about. I hope you can see that. It was where it's the dots where you could make the grid from there. You still looking for that file, Karina? Uh, no, I'm just, I can't tell which one is the JPEG and the uh, PNG, so I'll just send them both to you. There you go. Okay, sounds good. So yeah. um, I want to just show another example from the dot grids. Um, me filling in one of my journals here. Okay. I'm going to turn my camera on. I don't know if you can see it very well. Start video. So as you can see, I can just, I just use yeah. squares and um, sometimes I plan it out. Let's get to the next page here. So yeah, this one is just in the planning stages where I draw out where I'm going to do. And then I do a circle on each point of the square and then in the middle as well. And then that usually comes out with different kinds of knot works. And then I just fill in the break lines where I, where I want them to go. Wow, that's amazing. And then if I get bored enough, I uh, color it in. <laughs> yeah, for example, th these ones are colored in. Wow, that's fabulous. You've used a gradient color with them as well. Uh, it's just pencil crayon and two different yellows and two different greens. And then if I get really bored, I'll use watercolor. I'm just trying to find a good example. Sometimes the ink that I use bleeds through. There's this really nice one that I really liked. Journal pages, journal pages. Yeah, and sometimes I just go full on watercolor just for fun, and then uh, just bleeds it out. That sure one I, yeah. Some examples. Wow, you make amazing journals. I can't believe it. Mine look nowhere near that, but now I have some Celtic knots that we can kind of work with. Yeah. So if you make these into stickers, basically you're taking PNG, making them into stickers, so we could actually draw them on sticker paper with an offset in order to make them work for you and then you color them in by hand at a later date exactly yeah or you can even color them in and just make colored stickers okay uh, so the artwork, right but i prefer the blank one so if um for example i wanted like a big sticker just to stick in the middle of a page and I don't know what color I want to do at that point in time, then I can color it in later. But I like to have a variety of different kind of not work stickers. So. Wow, that sounds amazing. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some share screens <clears throat> and we're going to go and use some techniques here to take that drawing that came off Procreate or by hand, if you happen to do it that way, and place them into, uh, let's see, I'm going to go with the sticker one first to share you and show you what we picked up here. This is the file that I've just downloaded from Karina. And what we're going to do now, I'm going over to a place called remove.bg. Can you still see this, Karina? Yep. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna upload that image you just sent to me and it is on my downloads and there it is. I'm going to open it. Now I've placed it in here and it immediately removed all the white background. I just wanna make sure that it doesn't have the background that when we go to bring it into design space, we're working with just the black piece of it. So I'm just gonna download this 
and that will go immediately into my folder of downloads. So now I'm going to have to change screens here. I'm not going to stop. It's going to be a new share. I'm going to go. Oh. For some reason, my menu won't show up here. A new share. Okay. Okay, I'm going to stop the share. <laughs> and then I got to come back to the share. And I am going to share our design space screen. Close that. So every, you'll be able to see design space here. No problem. Yeah, yeah. No problem. Okay. okay, we're going to click on upload image. I clicked on upload here. I'm going to click on upload image. I'm going to browse for it. And we're going to my downloads folder right here. And this is the one that says remove BG on it. So that's the one I'm going to click on. And I'm going to click open. Now I, I always pick complex here. And the reason is it just because it'll keep all the lines and everything there. So I'm just going to click on continue. Looks really good. Click on continue. And we are going for a print then cut image. So I'm just going to upload this. And once again, it's a lot of clicking, but I'm going to insert the image right here. And it'll take a second or two. And I know it looks small, but what we're going to do is I'm going to remove the background back here by clicking on this little square. And now it's still a little hard to see. So what I want to do is come down here where it says blank canvas. And from that blank canvas, I'm going to come up to here where it says color. And I'm going to give it a nice golden background. That's just so I can see it a little better. Now I am going to make it bigger so I can see it. Now you can see the lines are quite crisp here in the background. So everything that you see is yellow is something that's that's coming through. But what we want to do is we want to make these individual stickers, not one as a group, as we see in the print and cut. And here's where the fun is going to come. So I'm going to come over here to shapes. I'm going to click on the square. Now just push the square over the very first one we have here. I'm just going to cover it up. This is going to take a little while. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to select all. I'm going to come up here and select all. And then I'm going to come down here and click on slice. And you can see how it came as a slice. Now I have a, a reverse one here. I'm going to take this one. I have a knot that's all by itself. And then I'm going to move this out of the way. And then I have another knot that's all by itself. So it depends on how dark you want it to print. Now, this one's pretty light. This one's pretty dark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the ones that I don't want. And I'm going to keep this one. Now, this is going to be the same process you go through for each of the knots. So I'm just going to do it two more times so that you can see this process once again. So this is a shape, just a square. And I'm just going to make that square so it fits over top, so nothing else is visible. Select both of these, come down here, and click on Slice. And I'm going to take that one off. I'm going to delete it. I've got the nice darker one that I wanted. Now I'm going to move this out of the way, and I can get rid of that original knot. And then we'll do one more, and then I'll show you how to fix them up. I just want to make sure we do it three times so it's easy for you to tell. Now, if you didn't have something that fit with a square, you can click this little unlock button here. And if it unlocks here, it's also going to unlock at the top. And then I can use these handles and just go over top that way so it's easier. And then click on the lock again. Now we have to select both items. Now, when you're slicing, you need two items each time. So we've got both. Come back down here to slice. It will slice it out, a piece I don't want. Nice dark one, perfect. And now I'll move this one out of the way and I'm going to delete this one. Now you could do the same with the next six if you want, but for now, 
I am not going to do that, but I am going to come over here to the one I've selected and just use the eyeball. And it's going to turn it off so that we can work with these ones. Now, what we're going to do here is make some individual stickers. So all I need to do is I'm going to take this first one and we're going to come up here to something called offset. I'm just going to click on the button with the offset. And as you can see, there is an edging here. Now this is quite wide that goes around. That would make a nice big fat one. Now, Karina, I don't know whether you want this big and fat or you want it a little smaller. Uh, probably a little smaller. Okay, so I'm going to change the 0.25 here to 0.125 and just tab away from it. And you'll see that I will get little areas on the inside. Can you see that? So what happens is when the sticker cuts, we've got this area in the back that will cut holes in it as well, but there is a way around it. So if we want 0.125, let's just play with it now. I'm just gonna click on apply. Now it comes up with a black background, not what we want. I'm gonna change that to white so that we can see it. As you can see, there's holes in behind. Mm -hmm. I'm not too sure if that's exactly what you wanted to do is have these holes in behind so the sticker cuts with holes. Uh, no, can we fill it? Okay, so I'm going to show you to do here. Now, this may or may not work, but we're going to experiment. I'm just going to duplicate this. Should be able to put them over top of each other like this. Now, if this doesn't work, don't worry, we've got a duplicate. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to weld them together. It didn't work whatsoever. So what we have to do is have a wider one or here's the other option. A lot easier if it's something that you really want to have in the background here. We know that this was a square. So I'm gonna take a square. I'm just gonna place it on the inside. I'm gonna change it to white as well. So you can see, you can see everything there. So I'm gonna highlight the both of those. And I'm going to come down here, way down here in the corner, and I'm going to weld those together. So now I have a smaller piece. Oh, that one went in behind. We're going to click on Arrange, and we're going to send it to the front. I'm just going to highlight both of these together now, and we are going to align them horizontally and vertically. So now we have exactly what we want for the sticker. Now there are two different pieces at this point in time. So what we really have to do here is make sure that they're going to stay together and only cut on the outside piece. So we have another little tool in the corner here and it is called flatten. So click on flatten. Now this becomes one piece and you can tell it has become one piece because up here it shows the flatten result of print then cut. So now what it will do is just cut along the outside edge and you have that perfect knot as a sticker and it has a smaller um, edge around it. Now you can go smaller edge and use the same process. This one could be a little more difficult if we want to use the same thing. So let's try this with, with an offset as well. Now it's already set at 0.125, exactly the same as before. Well, what happens if we go 0.25? You'll notice that we lose the inside piece of it. I'm just going to apply it for now. And of course, we'll make it white in the background so we can see it. It has a larger edge around the outside. So what would happen if I just move this out of the way and we just made this slightly smaller and then we can put it back on. Now it's still a pretty big edge so we can make it slightly smaller again. So you can play with it a little bit in the background. It doesn't always work, but that one seems to be okay. Let me just center them so they look a lot better. So I'm going to align them horizontally and align it vertically. Now that looks pretty close to what the other one was. So once again, that's a second method on how to do this. And we still need to come over here and flatten it. So now we have two stickers made.
Now we have our final one here. So you can pick either method and how it works. I like resizing them so they fit. It's not as perfect as what you would have with this one. So let's go back and take a look at this. I wonder, yeah, the offset's gonna go black no matter what. So if we decide the 0.125 was ideal, Karina? Yeah. Okay, so let's apply the that one. And this is interesting, it only end up two little holes here. I'm going to change that to white. We had two little holes here we need to take care of. So I think I should be able to do that with a square. Now the square is going to be pretty big. Just going to make it smaller so it fits inside here. Looks pretty good. It's hiding it really well. I'm going to make it white. <coughs> we have the two things in here. I'm just going to highlight them both. And then come back down in the corner here and I'm going to click on weld. So now we have this one that's going to fit on top. Whenever you do a process, it ends up going on top. Everything else goes in behind. So the last thing we want to do here is align it horizontally and align it vertically. And then of course, we've got the two of them together. We're going to come down here and flatten. And now we have three stickers. Now, when you're doing a print and cut, and this is going to be true for anything, you need to line them up and decide how you want them to come out and how big you want them. Right now, these stickers, let's see, five, six, it's almost four inches wide. Is that a little big, Karina? That's a little big. How, how wide would you like it? Um... Maybe three, I was going to say three centimeters. Three centimeters, we're in inches. So let's see, uh, it would be maybe just an inch. Uh, and 1.25, 1.5 inches. Yeah, just, just I'll try, let's try two inch, two inch by two inch. Okay. That's a two inch sticker. I will do the same with these other ones as well. They're pretty big. Otherwise, yeah, that's a full page journal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, the biggest thing is with Cricut Design Space, you are really limited in how you can do your stickers. We have a 6.75 by, I believe it's 9.25 that we're allowed. But when you go to print it on your printer, it comes out a little wider. It will come, it'll cut about an inch off. So we'll have about 7.5 to 7.25 and I'll just show you what I mean. Right now we could set this to print and cut without a problem but I want to put in a square here for the time being just to give us an idea and I'm going to unlock it. I'll unlock it down here. I'm going to make its width 6.75 and I believe I have 9.25 available. And that should be a good print and cut size. So we want to fit everything within this. And I'm just going to lock that size so that we know the size that we're looking at. And of course, I'm going to make this white so it sort of disappears in the background. Now I know it's going to be a little tougher with these. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to arrange it, and I'm going to send it to the back so that we can see it. Maybe I should make it a different color. I'll change it a little later just so that we can see what we're doing here. Now it's to the back. So we know we have the perfect size for what we want. And I think we'll fit three on here as it goes. I'm just going to show you a quick technique here. I'm just going to hold my shift key down, select the three of them. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to duplicate. And I'll bring it down. I'm going to duplicate it again. I'm going to bring it down, duplicate again. And I'm going to bring it down. And I know we have a little room left over, but I think what we'll, we'll do with what we have here. Now, we know that this is all going to come out as part of a sheet. It will put a line around it. It's exactly what we want now, 6.75. 
Now it looks a little longer here. It's because I've left a margin. So I want to select all on here for now. And I am going to group them. And the reason I'm going to group them is because I want them to stay together. And then I'm going to attach them. And I am going to duplicate the whole thing. Now you may wonder, wow, you must be crazy. You're duplicating the whole thing. Because what we're going to do is something a little different here. And I'm going to select all again. I think everything's selected. We're going to duplicate. And I am going to bring these down. And I want to take everything again, select all. I am going to group them. And I'm going to make them the proper size now, 6.75 and see where we get with the other one. And it seems to fit. Now it looks awkward at this little small stage, but what's going to happen when I go to print it on the paper, it's actually going to expand it out. So I guess I better save this before I lose anything. So this one is Celtic knot stickers. And I'm just going to put it as a feature for now have my little collection all in place, it will save it. Now I also have to take a look at the backgrounds of each one of these because every time I have a yellow square over here, I've got to make it white or it's going to print yellow. So we're going to go to white. I've got one of them looking for every yellow square. And I am in the layers panel to do this. And come down here, another square, going to make it white. Should find one more down here, and there it is. You cannot change the color any other way. You must work in the layers panel. Okay, looks like we're ready to go. Now I've got it set for Maker 3. I'm going to push it out to Maker for now, because most of you are likely to have a Maker rather than a Maker 3. So we have four little pages that will cut and print and each one little one here. Now we haven't flattened the whole thing together because we really don't want to. So I'm gonna click on make it. It's telling us it's big. Now I didn't attach all four together. So look what happened. I ended up with two pages. So that's my mistake. I'm gonna cancel this. I'm gonna select all on the screen here again, all together. I am going to attach them. And now let's go over to make it. Because what I want it to do is to go on one piece of sticker paper. It may just take a second or two to get there. So what happens is take a look at where the margins are. We get a normal half inch margin and a normal half inch margin. It actually expanded it out. So we'll have a full eight and a half by 11 and it'll have four little sticker packs and it's going to be the perfect size. So that's just a little trick when it comes to stickers. Now, if I'm going to click on continue, it may get excited at me because I don't have my maker available right here, but it may pick it up. Is picking the sticker paper is going to be the next part. So it's looking for maker. It's probably going to scream at me and say, you picked the wrong machine. <laughs> well, what we really want to do is send this to the printer. Now I could pick it up with um, a printer. I'm gonna pretend I've already printed it. So I'll click on already printed. It's going to come up here. It's gonna say, you've got the wrong machine, but that's okay. I will pick a different device here. So we'll go maker three, change on the canvas. <laughs> Pack to make it. It'll load it once again. Now, if you pick the wrong machine, that's fine. And by the way, you can cut these stickers out on a joy as well. You just wouldn't make them eight and a half by 11. What you would do is just have one on each side so you could have a long one. So coming using the joy for this is just absolutely perfect as well because it's meant for cutting. So let's just continue here. I'll pretend I've already printed it. Why does it want to come up with maker here? I have no idea.
but you will be choosing a sticker paper. Now the Cricut sticker paper is really thick and Karina, you've had some cut out on that sticker paper. It's no. pretty thick. So you can also find some sticker papers at the dollar store or Michael's that are a lot thinner. I found some that like we have a place called Staples here, but Office Depot, the same thing where you can get the sticker paper and it will come out a lot thinner. So it's easier to deal with coming through the printer. I have to see if it's going to allow me to do this. You've selected just from the one you used. No, I haven't. <laughs> okay, we will come here, back here. Sorry for the delay on this, but sometimes these things happen. And as we're making things, there's never anything that's absolutely straightforward. It just never seems to work that way. And I want to go back to the mat. And I'll continue. Already printed. Now it's coming up with my Maker 3. I guess I just didn't change it properly. So my fault. So I'm going to browse all materials here. And this is going to be sticker. I'll just click on my little spyglass here. So as you can see, you've got sticker paper removable. You've got smart paper sticker. That's a Cricut product. You can see by the C on here. We've got clear. We've got white. These are all Cricut printable ones. But there's also this sticker paper removable. And those are the compatible ones. So you can choose that one. If I go back to all materials, see if there's anything else that shows up and it doesn't. Because I'm not going to be using the Cricut one, I'm just going to use sticker paper removable. Now, don't worry about the fact that it says removable. It's just that it is sticker paper that's not made by Cricut itself. So I can just click on that one and click done. And it'll simply tell us to load the materials, the fine point blade, and we'll load it and we'll cut those stickers out. Now, I haven't printed it and I'm not going to cut it for this demo, but I just want to give you an idea of what you do with the sticker part. After they have been drawn, the biggest thing here is learning how to draw those uh, Celtic knots. Now, I'm going to stop my screen share here and Karina... Uh, do you have anything else you want to add? Um, no, I think that's pretty much it. <laughs> okay, well, I hope everybody really enjoyed this. So Karina showed us in Procreate and also talked about how to draw them by hand and gave us some examples from her journal. So we hope you learned a whole lot from this. And until next time, happy crafting. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.